Welcome to all of you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It looks like maybe some of the folks here forgot to turn their clocks ahead last night. If they, if they come right as we're leaving worship, don't make them feel bad. Um, invite them to the fellowship because, by the way, today during our fellowship time, we're having a, a special party. So please, everyone, come to our fellowship time following worship this morning. A um, couple announcements. The um, uh, people are signing up folks for our pictorial directory. Maybe you saw them as you came in out there. So be sure that you sign up for your picture time um, because we want our, our pictorial directory to be as complete as possible this time. Um, note that on at 5.30 on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, that the youth will be putting on the midweek supper, the dinner for us that night. And so invite all of you to come to that um, service from the meals being served from 5.30 to 6.30, and then at 7 o'clock is the worship service. So please come back for that. Next Sunday, can you believe it, is Palm Sunday already. And so the children have been invited to get here early so that they can help with the processional. The choir, understand, you're helping with that too. So that, And we also have a drama coming up. Be sure to come back and bring your friends, invite other folks to come. I think it will be an exciting time. And um, the more the merrier, so please invite other folks to be here with us. Um, those are the announcements that, that I have in mind. The other announcement is that we will be having Holy Communion today. So all of you who trust in the saving power of our Lord Jesus are invited to the Lord's table for either the elements of communion or for a blessing. Um, now we begin worship. Please stand. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done, and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your lives through faith. Amen. our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray. Creator God, you prepare a new way in the wilderness, and your grace waters our desert. Open our hearts to be transformed by the new thing you are doing, that our lives may proclaim the extravagance of your love given to all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. And it's time now for the children's message. So if there are any children or youth who'd like to come forward for the children's message. Anybody want to come forward? Yeah, come on up. Mm -hmm. I see Dan is on his way too, so that's good. want to join me? <laughs> well, hello there. And what's your name? My name is Dan. <laughs> well, you know what? We're going to talk about the gospel story today, okay? Well, because we are, because it's a good story, that's why. Yeah, it's about this family. There's the brother, Lazarus, and there's the sisters, Martha and Mary, and then there's Jesus, okay? And this was after Jesus did this big wow. He raised Lazarus from the dead. That is a big wow. Can you say wow with me? Wow. Wow. Okay, well, at least my voice was there. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. Well, anyway, at this time, uh, Lazarus and Mary and Martha were having a dinner for Jesus. Okay. And in the middle of this dinner, Mary took out some expensive perfume and anointed Jesus' feet. Anointed Jesus' feet, okay? And then she got down on the floor and wiped Jesus' feet with her hair. And that's a big wow, too. Can you say wow for me out there? Wow. Yeah, that is a big wow. Who would do that? I mean, that would show so much love and serving. My goodness. Well, you know, there is a time here at church that the pastor uses oil that's scented like perfume, okay? And that time is during baptism, okay? And, you know, the pastor takes some of this oil see your hand. Do you know what happens? The pastor does the sign of the cross and says that you're a child of God forever. Forever. And that's a big wow there too. Can we say wow? Wow. wow. Okay, that is a big wow. Forever and ever. Okay, well let's pray, okay? Dear Lord, thank you for all the gifts you give us every single day. Help us to put you in the center of our life. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up. You shake my hand. There we go. He's a brave guy. Any oh, any oh, folks? Oh. Whoops. Oh, wrong direction. And you probably want to head off this way. We've got Children's Church over there. Anyone else who would like to follow off this way?
first reading is written in Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord, who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise, they are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth, do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches. For I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself, so that they might declare my praise. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is written in Philippians chapter 3, verses 4b through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel according to John, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. 
She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. this season of Lent, we have been looking each week at pictures of salvation as presented to us through our Bible readings. Today we will be looking at a grouping of three pictures. The first picture is very, very old. It comes to us from 500 years before Christ was born. At that time, the Jewish people were in exile in Babylon. They had been driven from their homes. The temple had been destroyed. There was a great uncertainty about the future. Despair and fear caused them to lament, saying, Where is God, the Holy One? We want to go back to those good old days. God speaks to those fearful and despairing and lamenting people through the prophet Isaiah. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old, he wrote. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way for you in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people so that you might declare my prayer. God loves them. And God reminds them that God has always been there for them in the past and assures them the same thing for the future. God will always be there for them. Do not remember the former things and cling to them, the people are told. These things of old were glorious. But it's time to press on into the future. Trust that God will help you to experience life in a new way. God's love and the promises that God makes to, to us in love, to them in love, to all of us in love, those promises are extravagant. His love is extravagant. And God's people are called to move forward in faith beyond what they ever had imagined The second picture takes us to Bethany. That's the home of Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. They're dear friends of Jesus. It's close to Jerusalem. Just be days before that, as Dan told us this morning, Jesus had worked a miracle in this place. He had come there in response to an urgent message from the two sisters that Lazarus was ill. So Jesus had come there knowing that, in fact, Lazarus was dead. And when Jesus arrived, surrounded by all of those grieving people, he wept. Then, to everyone's surprise, Jesus demanded that the stone be rolled away from the front of the tomb, and he cried out against the powers of death, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus did. He who once was dead was alive. There was a huge rejoicing that day, great rejoicing for all the people that were there, but not everyone. Because we are told that the authorities were threatened by what Jesus did. So they began to look for him in order to arrest him. Now Jesus is back there at the home of his friends in Bethany. Disciples and others are there too. We can picture this in our minds. Lazarus is seated at the table with the others. He's alive now. Martha's serving. She's always been the one that has blessed other people by serving. And Mary, Mary is kneeling at the feet of Jesus in devotion, in praise. 
that was her custom too. This time though, Mary broke open a jar of very expensive perfume and anointed the feet of Jesus. He is the one called Messiah, which means anointed one of God. And Mary, acting as a prophet that day, anoints Jesus for his upcoming burial using those burial spices that she had. Now also present in the picture is Judas, once a loyal follower of Jesus, but in contrast to Mary, Judas chooses to live in ways that have the world revolve all around him. This, of course, eventually leads to his own destruction, not to say that of others around him, too. Judas symbolizes for us the way of self-serving actions. Quite the opposite of Mary, who in her actions proclaims that God is bringing about something new, something totally unexpected, maybe not even desired, but something new and life-giving. Then we see a third picture in this grouping. When we look at it, we recognize the people in this picture because we're looking at us here at St. John's. We see people who have been here for many years, have faithfully served, still doing their best. We see young people, children who are learning to serve. There are friendships here that have spanned the decades and other friendships that are just beginning. We know of ministries that have gone on here for years and there are dreams for new ministries to begin. We have heard the stories of God's faithfulness to the people here in Mendota, to our ancestors. We know their stories of the hard times, times of strife, and their good times, glorious times, sometimes even called glory days. But through all those nearly 175 years, there's been one constant that has never gone away. That constant is God's extravagant love poured out for our world through Jesus Christ. And there have been people, our ancestors in the faith, who have responded to that love of God through their worship, their prayer, through their service to others. And if we look really carefully at this picture of the family of God here at St. John's, maybe we'll catch a glimpse of hopeful excitement. The anticipation of the new things that God is planning. Three pictures today. The Jewish people of long, long ago in Babylon. The disciples gathered together with the death of Jesus only a few days away. And then the people here in Mendota who are gathered at St. John's this morning. They're all very, very different pictures. But in each one of them, we see the evidence of God's extravagant love. We see faithful people offering worship and praise to God and serving others in his name. We see a sense of anticipation that even if we don't know it or see it, that God is about ready to bring about something new. As we look toward Holy Week coming up, let's think back to the pictures of salvation we have seen so far this Lent, these five weeks of Lent, and all that we have discovered about God's salvation through them. We have discovered 
that God's salvation through Jesus Christ is wider and broader and more inclusive than the devil or the world would have us believe. Remember that picture of the temptation in the wilderness? We have discovered that God will never leave us. Jesus will never leave us, no matter what. Remember the picture of the hen and the chicks? We have discovered God's love for all people, regardless of whether they deserve it or not. Remember the prodigal son, the elder son, the waiting father? We have discovered that Jesus comes to us right in the middle of our lives to save us from perishing and to empower us to bear good fruit for the sake of the world. Remember that fig tree that was bearing no fi figs and the gardener next to it? And today, we have seen that God offers the constant hope of doing a new thing, new life springing forth. Now there's one more picture that we will be seeing here as we come into the conclusion of this Lenten season. We will be seeing the picture of the cross of Jesus Christ. Through the death of Christ upon that cross and his resurrection from the dead, we will catch a glimpse of God's ultimate sacrifice offered to us and to the whole world. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I invite us to stand and sing in the cross of Christ. Christ I glory. Confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was 
crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and in hope. Holy God, in times of both joy and sorrow, you call us to worship you. Bless the work of musicians, altar guild members, readers, greeters, presiding and assisting ministers, ushers, media and sound technicians, and all who serve in worship. Allow your spirit to be present through our ministry so all who worship here may come to know you more fully. Lord, in your mercy, creative God, you make all living creatures and proclaim your creation good. Teach us to care for the homelands for all your creatures. Lord, in your mercy, living God, you require mercy and justice. Bless all those who vote this week with your wisdom and your compassion so that the candidates who are elected to serve would do so with integrity and with the desire to work together for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate God, we ask that you give your peace and vision to all who struggle with addiction, depression, grief, or illness, including those we name in our hearts. Allow us to be your agents of care for those who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, deepen our union with you, that our lives may reflect your goodness, and that in death we may live in your glory, surrounded by all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. To you, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share Christ's peace with each other.
God our provider, you have fed us, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with words of grace and life. Bless us in these gifts which we receive from your bounty through Jesus Christ our Lord. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All is now ready. You may be seated and the ushers will direct you.
body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O God, in this holy meal, you have embraced us and gathered us into your arms of compassion and protection. Release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see our work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.